Welcome back, friends and fellow adventurers, for the 31st campaign episode of Cocked, a Real Play RPG podcast. Last week, we left the party as Braca, Katie, and Agard had stumbled upon a strange room with burnt remains all around and a trap that sends a fiery object straight into the ceiling, scorching anything left in the room. Agard went back to make sure the path is sealed so they don't receive any unexpected visitors, while Braca headed into the chamber to figure out the mechanism, and each left Katie in the tunnel in pure darkness. <clears throat> Braca, yeah. you went the back tree. to the room. Mm. Okay. Are you? What What is Braca doing in the room? Um, could Braca remember which tiles he stepped on? Like which ones didn't mm-hmm. activate? Okay. Yep. And so he's just gonna start going in like the clockwise motion again, like from mm-hmm. like the entrance, and just start. Can he, from where he is, see like the tile he put the oil on? To see if it did anything. Yeah, I'd say when you walk in, you're able to see it. Okay, it's like it's like a clear, like, like, um, distinctive scorch mark on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You uh, see, it, it's in like the shape of like a circular puddle as the grease kind of pooled together on the stone, and then when the flame came up, that certain area is more scorched than the rest. Okay. Um. So yeah, Brock is just gonna start going clockwise again. Just, um investigating the room like um like tapping each tile and seeing which ones activate so you work your way around clockwise you finish that third quadrant area Mm. and it ends near the pit the next stone you step on in the fourth quadrant you hear the okay um pour oil on that one Okay. And how how long did it take him to do like the full like well or the clockwise motion to where he is now? Um, I would say it probably because you were checking every stone yeah. um, from where you were. It probably takes you about fifteen minutes getting all the way around. And he's you said I'm he's in the fourth quadrant, so he's like mm-hmm. near the entrance again. You're you're a little bit away from it. You just entered the fourth quadrant from how you were walking around. Right. So you're probably like I don't know. 30 feet from where you are in a straight line to the doorway. Okay. Um, so hearing the click, he'll get um, the second one, uh, another vial of oil poured on that one as well. Um, and then he'll just more quickly um, check the rest of the tiles, just like essentially just like, not run along them, but just kind of like fast walk on them to see which one's click so that he can get out in time. Okay. <clears throat> You don't hear any other clicks as you're going, but roll a d6. One. One? Okay. You make it to the entrance of the room. What would you like to do once you get it to the entrance? Uh, just walk back to... Um, well, first Brock is going to look around and realize, oh, wait, I forgot. I didn't say anything to Katie. Um... But then you'll just you'll just start walking back to the point where he remembered every like the point where like we stood before the explosion went off. You get just outside of the range where the scorch marks are. And a light gets bright. And as you just glance over your shoulder, you can see this burst on the ceiling and it comes out and you take Oof four points of damage as you feel a searing heat right hit your back and the side of your face so if you have um resistance to fire no. i was um, gonna say you would you could no. cut that in half <laughs> but. yes I, mean, I might so you take four points of fire damage okay okay Brock will like probably like pat down himself to make sure he doesn't have any fire or anything mm-hmm. going um and then He'll just say, well, might as well do it again. And just... <laughs> no. He did realize 
He forgot to tell Katie anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, Jesus Christ. The, I will say, you did say explosion. he would notice that. Yeah, yeah the oh. explosion. But then he did say he went back in, so... Well, I just don't think he cares about Katie all that Well, much. wait a minute. It... <laughs> Fact. If... Does Katie see a light, then? If it went off? Where you... the fuck am I? So, so... I had to run up on my butt. <laughs> you were there. You were there for about two minutes. Uh, yeah. Kind of whispering, trying to figure out where right. they were, and then you headed in the direction of Agard. Oh, that's, you that's what I, that's what I had you roll for. Yeah. Great. So you heard the. Oh, she's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you're continuing to walk, you hear oh. and can feel like the concussive nature of the. Um, blast, blast! Yep, from the room. Blasty blast. You guys can hear wow. it and feel it. You don't necessarily I mean, feel heat Agard from it. Shit himself. You, you don't feel any heat from it, but you do have that. I guess it's the only concussion. way I can, yeah, like a yeah. concussion. Yeah. Um, like if you don't have the back windows down in a car and you right. just open one and you get that kind of wobbly. You know, like a feeling. feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agar would like to know what a car is. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> that was for you as players, not for oh the podcast. Um, we don't break the fourth <clears throat> wall here. That's right. Never. Ever. I said never. You I know. said ever. That is. I didn't. Count. I didn't. Say so anything. cute. You guys said never ever. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> guys! Goosebumps. Wow. So, goosies. Goosies. Roll a perception check. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, 14. Roll it to hit. 14. Oh, my God. 14. Oh, please roll it to hit. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah, 14. Pretty good. Roll a stealth check for Katie. I'm not trying to be stealthy. I know. All right. Well, it's just so. My dice ain't trying to be stealthy. Eleven. Okay. <clears throat> Agar can hear footsteps coming from the direction of the she room. She's full on stomping. No. <laughs> can Agar tell that they're Katie? They don't sound like tiny little pitter patter feet. Pitter patter. So. <sighs> Alex wants to wild shape into a giant spider. <laughs> so you walk up on this big old hairy butt. Oh my and then, god. And then eight light here. Oh. <laughs> but that's just Alex. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I, 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 um, I don't have the torch anymore. I'm at the door, right? I'm still mm-hmm. at the door. Yeah, you're still at the door. They weren't, did we say they weren't close on the door? Did we do that? Um, you I couldn't think, see I, because. I think know. I fell asleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not a judgment. That's just a tired. Uh,. Hearing that, he is going to unsheath his spear and turn around to see what's coming towards him. So, Katie, as you're as you're stumbling along the wall, <clears throat> Wait, when did I stumble? <laughs> I'm holding onto the wall for a reason. I think he's he's narrating your a, dice rolls, but it's not a uh huh. It's, it's not like cinder you. block wall. It's like round stones that people have placed into the dirt and pushed in. So you're like, when I say fumble, I don't mean you're falling over yourself. I mean your hands are kind of <laughs> switching from stone to stone. You can't just run it along a smooth wall. Uh, like what they, I didn't mention so is that Agard on his way to the door had a whole bushel of bananas. And he's been eating them and throwing the peels over his shoulder. <laughs> and Mario Kart, here we go. Yeah, I'm fumbling apparently. As Katie's feeling her way along, all of a sudden about, let's say, 180 to 100 feet in front of you, you see this faint light appear. It's a similar color that you've seen before. Okay. You continue towards it? Yeah. Yeah. So as you continue towards this light, moth to a flame... As you continue towards this light, you start to make out that it is the spear tip that you have gotten accustomed to seeing Agard use. 
he has his back to you and is looking at the door with the spear. I thought you said he turned around. Yeah, I did. When I heard, okay, is this leading up to now mm-hmm. I hear? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So when I hear, oh. that's when I turn around. Yep. So as... And throw the spear down the hallway just <laughs> instinctually. So Agard's back is to you. You can make out the silhouette with the spear. And he slowly turns and looks. And about 30 feet from you, so just at the edge mm-hmm. of where the dim light kind of would end, Yeah. you can make out what looks like a dragonborn moving towards you. They speak draconic, by the way. Oh, mm, my God. Dragons, too. Um, Katie, is that you? Yeah, I I was in the hallway with Braga, and I saw you walk away, and then I tried to ask him a question, and he didn't answer, so I don't, I don't know where he is, and I thought I was going towards him, but apparently I came towards you, so I think we need to go check on Braga, because I don't know what he's doing. I don't know where he went. When did they hear the boom? You would have heard it before you got to right. Agard. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, and Agard would have probably at least felt that now it's mm-hmm. closed. He would have felt, you know. Yeah, you would have felt a, a little yeah. bit. <coughs> and um, it, that was probably, I'd say, about 30 seconds to a minute before yeah. you saw Katie. So he obviously set off the trap again. L- let me finish looking at this door that has now closed on us. I want to see if we can. And you rolled a nat 20 with mm-hmm. your perception once you right. pulled the uh, unsheathed your spear. Looking at it, <clears throat> there are blocks on this side mm-hmm. that are sticking out towards you. Mm-hmm. And as you think back, it correlates with which side or which stones were the ground stones that you guys had to push in. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to extrapolate from that that... Well, let me do an insight on it, because, you know... Oh, yeah, it's another natural 20, so... You're pretty sure that's where the oh. uh, ground stones were. I believe we'll be able to open it from the side. Let's let's go check on, on Bracca. Yeah, let's, let's go. Yeah, so we just we go back down towards Bracca. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Take you, takes you guys a couple minutes. Were you going back in the room, or were you um, walking to find Katie? Raka is going to sketch um, essentially the tiles in the room, and um, he's not going to like walk along the room and sketch just where he is, just remember which ones are trapped and which ones aren't. Okay. Es- essentially, like just marking them. like just uh, Yeah, just marking each so one. So far, you have two marked for the trapped ones that you found. Okay. And they're in different quadrants, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you going back in after that? I guess the third time it went off. Second time you marked yeah. a trap square. Uh, no, nah, Bro- Brocco will turn around now, realizing that um, Katie's not there. So he'll begin to walk back. Okay, so that'll make Agard and Katie's commute to Brocco a little bit shorter. It takes you guys about, say, three minutes walking that direction. Brock is not walking at like a quick pace either because he's walking and like writing right. stuff down in his notebook at the same time. You're walking for probably like two or three minutes as well when you start to notice a faint light appear and get closer and closer and you can make it. Well, you're holding it in front of you, correct? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can just see the light. Okay. He's going to kind of like startle Brock a little bit so he's going to quickly like throw his notebook in his backpack and just pull out acid just natural response to anything really right and then it's kind of like there's a weight there so when you get within 30 feet of Braca, you can make out the the size you pretty mm-hmm. sure that's Braca. Yeah. can't see features but sure Braca. oh Braca's <clears throat> gonna put away the acid and get his notebook and stuff out what have you discovered? Two traps so far. They're, I've essentially marked quadrants just for different sections. There's two in, or one in, uh, in two on the far right in different mm-hmm. quadrants. So I'm assuming on the <clears throat> left side there are two over there as well, mm-hmm. but in different quadrants. Oh, I'm going to grab a stone and do the the light thing on it and hand it to Katie 
Sorry, I forgot that I was too focused on the room. Yeah, I, I uh, thank you. I, I, I didn't know where you went. <sighs> well, I th- think I can maybe, hopefully, find the last two. Assuming that there are only two more, mm-hmm. if the if it follows the pattern. Okay. And you're are you marking these mm-hmm. stones? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. Um, do I remember seeing like the scorch mark from the oil? That mm-hmm. I, okay. That and you also you have a rough sketch yeah. of the room and where the tiles are, and you kind of could shade in which ones. Yeah. You're pretty sure are the ones that set it off. How yeah. big is the hole again? The it's about a ten foot by ten foot diameter. Okay. Are you gonna wild shape into something and go down it? Well, it's con- considering that. Before, I mean, without it being tripped, obviously. Yeah. But a thousand feet would take forever yeah. to fly. I mean, you could turn into a uh, an owl or something. It's for what an hour you can move sixty feet per turn. So. Yeah, but if it somehow were to go, we don't know that it doesn't go off. Right. That's also on true. its own too. So mm-hmm. I think he would think I don't want to be a fried owl halfway. Because to get back up, it would take as much time to get back up. Right. So that thing fires off, and there's nothing that. It yeah, could it'd do. take you roughly a, a little over a minute to go all the way to where you heard the rocket and all the way back. Mm, yeah. I think it's like 35 or 36 seconds, something like that. Yeah, no. Okay. Damn. So, I, if you two want, I could try and find. I'm assuming the third is two more. The other two. The only question I have is to what end? I mean, if we find all the ones that are trapped, we can investigate their room further, like safely investigate the room to see if there's any okay. hidden passage or anything. But that, is, that is fine. Katie and I will head up the tunnel um, to safe distance and, and wait for you to come in and get us. Okay. So, Braca will just... He's gonna, this time, not, like, walking, like, fully... Well, no, he'll, um, walk, like, a full, like, clockwise motion and avoid the two that he triggered initially. And just do his same investigation thing. So, you pass through the first quadrant, and you don't hear anything, you don't see anything... About three quarters of the way through the second quadrant. Again, you get close to the hole and you hear okay. oil, then I'm gonna leave. Okay. Again, it takes a couple minutes. Rocky, you walk out of the room, you walk about 60 feet back, and Katie and Agard are standing there. Um, you could see the light from the spear, I'm assuming, still. You kind of walk up and you let them know. You let him know you found another stone. Yeah, like, yeah. So Bracco walks up and lets Agard and Katie know about the other stone. You guys have a, a brief conversation about another trap stone. A couple minutes go by and then woof, goes off again. You guys feel a hot blast of air, but you're far enough away that you don't take any damage or anything from the, uh, the fire and the heat. Another question. Are mm-hmm. the... Other so this one activated in the in the second quadrant you said mm-hmm. okay are all of them activating closer to the edge of the pit or just in like random spots in each quadrant? So the one in the third quadrant was kind of in between where the wall is and where the pit is. The one in the fourth quadrant was along the pit. The one in the second quadrant was along the pit as well. Okay. You don't know which one you stepped on when you walked in first to set it off to know where that one is. Okay. Okay, Brock is just going to go back and mainly just focus on the first quadrant this time instead of walking through the whole room. Okay. Nothing happens as you walk through the first quadrant. Okay. Well, hmm. kind of startles Brock a little bit. Then he's just going to do another clockwise motion. See if he... Avoiding the ones he stepped on, obviously. So, you get through the second and third quadrant. There's nothing there. It's been about ten minutes that he's been doing this at this point. 
The moment you step into the fourth quadrant near the pit, you hear. And it, it is the stone that you had already marked. Yeah, it's also avoiding. Oh, then. You don't find anything if you're avoiding that stone. Oh, well. Okay. Brago will just kind of confirm and just do it like another maybe two times and then go back. He didn't find anything in the first quadrant. Right. Is the first quadrant the quadrant without the torch? Yep. Hmm. Well, that'll do it. Well, I mean, that's not a game, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, could Braca... It really sounds like metagaming. Could Braca make an intelligence check and like try and piece that together? Like, the only quadrant that's missing doesn't have a torch and the other three do? So Brock has walked around the room now <clears throat> a couple times. He's kind of scratching his head, looking around, trying to find anything that could explain it. You sketched it out, too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, it's, all, it's all sketched in everything. Right. Roll an intelligence check. Uh, Twelve. It takes you a little bit. You pour over your notes. You keep looking around the room. You're avoiding the stones that you've already poured oil on. Um, as you go around and it dawns on you that you found one in the second, third, and fourth quadrant but the first one which you haven't found anything in doesn't have a torch no. and could Baraka step on like each individual tile in the first quadrant and like nothing happens? Mm-hmm. nothing happens Okay. Um, how high are the like torch sconce things off the ground? probably like Three feet. Okay. Well, four feet probably. Rocket will go back. Sorry, I was gone for a little bit. So, something interesting I found out. So, the three sections of the room that have pressure plates have are essentially correlated to the torches on the wall, which is weird. Hmm. So I don't know if. Having the fourth torch, like a fourth torch lit on the wall, if that would make the fourth pressure plate essentially appear or be active. Because I walked on every single tile in that area, nothing happened. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. If we need to just remove all the torches and the pressure plates won't be active, or if they all need to be lit, or Mm. what. Why don't you try to. Well, we can, I don't know if you can reach it. Um, why don't we try to just grab one and see if that will affect the pressure plate that you've already found on that one? Sure. I guess we'll... Does that make sense? Go. Which one are you taking? Okay. okay. Uh, just one in the uh, second quadrant. Okay. <clears throat> you take the torch from the second quadrant. You well, someone else probably has to, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm just going to stand. I'm going to point out. I don't understand. I don't think he's. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not tall enough to. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, yeah. Maybe. I'm going to point out the one that's like the one that's the pressure plate thingy. Okay. And just tell you, um, just take the torch out and then I'll step on it. Oh, okay. So Katie grabs the torch and walks into the hallway, gets about. 60, 70 feet away, where you guys know the safe distances that you guys aren't taking any damage or anything from it. Braca steps on the... Before that, do I hear any sort of, like, mechanical noise when the torch gets taken off? Nope. Okay. You step on the plate in the second quadrant? Right? Hmm. Nothing happens. Well, okay. Like, the stone, the tile, does it even go down anymore? It goes down, but... No click or anything. No click. No click. Okay. Um, mm. Braca will go with the rest of the party and wait the five minutes just in case. Mm. And if nothing happens, just go back, I guess. Nothing happens. You guys have been in this area for roughly an hour now. Yeah. Um, between going back to the door, coming back, and, and doing all this investigating. You've been in this area for about an hour. What quadrant do you want to do now? Wait a minute. What? The torches weren't lit when we first came into this room, and we were going to the pit, and Braca 
clicked the plate. Mm-hmm. But we did have my uh, the light, yeah, the so light. There was some sort of so light. it could just be light in general. It might not be the torches themselves. <laughs> Why are you staring at me? Hmm. Okay, okay. But what what so what quadrant did he step on when we were first there? I'm without assuming, the torches lit, I'm assuming the first one. How did you walk in the room? I mean, I mean, we just walked. Right in up to the pit. I mean, I initially said I was going like clockwise, so. Okay. So, yeah, it would have been in the first quadrant. Okay. <sighs> All right, well, we just go grab the other torches then. Okay. You taking them both? Hmm? Which quadrant are you stepping on first? Well, I mean. You have to take them or just put them out? Just, yeah. I, I guess just put them out. Okay, you can put them out. Yeah. Which quadrant tile are you stepping on first? The third. Third? Nothing happens. No, same with the fourth then. You hear the click the moment you step on the tile that you have marked? With no light? The click with no light? I have no idea. What was the one that clicked just a moment ago? Was that the third one? The one that clicked before this click? What quadrant? The one that clicked before the fourth quadrant? Yeah, before this one that just clicked. Pretty sure it was the second one, wasn't it? The one that we tried? Like the first torch we initially took out? No, the last one that set it off. That actually set off. Because you did third and fourth quadrant first, too. And then I want to say it was the second one. Second one was the most recent one. So yeah, I guess I guess the... Third. So it went from four to two, or from two to four. Mm-hmm. And what was the one that we just clicked on whenever the we fourth. took the light off, though? The fourth, right? The fourth. Yes, yeah. so you, you stepped on the third quadrant first. There was nothing. When you stepped on the one on the fourth quadrant, you heard a click. Okay. After all the light had been put out. Mm-hmm. I don't... I have no idea. Okay, so let's go back in the hallway. Yeah. And wait. Mm-hmm. So about a minute passed with that conversation. You guys walk into the hallway. I, I would say we quickly get out of there. Since yeah. We were maybe expecting not to hear a click. So. You get to the safe distance away and around roughly five minutes. <laughs> bright light bursts up, disperses from the ceiling out. You feel the rush of hot air and then it slowly descends into darkness again other than the light that you have with the spear do i still have my rock rock? Mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna go and um i'm gonna go the second quadrant okay does the pressure plate go off are you looking specifically for the one that he marked yeah oh okay i didn't know you just said i'm gonna go to the second quadrant does it click yeah okay the pressure plate There's no click from that one. I'm going to go to the first one. The there's first n- quadrant. There's nothing marked in the first quadrant. Oh. Let me investigate the first quadrant. <laughs> okay. You um, make an investigation check? Nope. You don't find anything. Cool. Do I hear anything? Nope. Right. Well, make a perception check. Nope. Nope. Would you would you roll? Six. There's nothing added to it or subtracted from it? Nope. Okay. So I'm just gonna go back into the hallway then, where y'all are. Um Well, I had a theory that maybe it was going in order. Like maybe he if he set off the first one and then the second one and then the third one and then the fourth one so maybe we could just avoid whichever one in the pattern is next, thinking it's going in order, but... Um, you know how mad I'm going to be if you say this is all for nothing? I want you to know. I mean, that's what Agard is feeling right now. It's like, what is... But he's also... Cause he, doesn't <coughs> he doesn't understand what it is, so he's... I, I don't know how to get out of here or what the purpose of this is. The way we can get out is the way we came. I don't. I do not see what this has to do with. I don't think. I don't know. 
Mm, I guess let's just leave them. Yeah. I mean, out of game. If you guys want, if your characters want to stay, then stay. I, I mean, don't Agar, know what Agar, it's Agar, for. Agar just doesn't know what it is, so it's <laughs> like. If, it, he do, if he doesn't see a purpose for it, then he just... Katie's attention span Bro- is Bro- not but. there. Bracca, in his mind, thinks if, like, there's, like, this big room here, and there's a big pit, and there's something like a trap, like a like a convoluted trap, obviously, here, so maybe they're guarding something, like, that's yeah. down, at, like, down at the bottom of the pit, and maybe there's some door somewhere in the room. Possibly, or this is just, like, a prison that they put people in. Maybe. And it, you know, just because they know they're going to step But why would they have an elemental know. door? Like, why would it open? Well, they for would. The it was probably. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 Alex is stumped. I don't know. I am too. Could Brock? I thought do, it was, could Brock do an intelligence check? Maybe. <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> no. All right. Well, that's a seven. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Brock is pretty sure he's learned all he can about this trap. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess I, 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 just, I don't I don't know, you know. I know that we're wasting a lot of time, and we really don't even know what it's for anymore. I mean, it is interesting. This is a, a doorway with sylvan glyphs leading to a fire pit. And I, I thought, Brock, Maybe. you were onto something when you said that possibly the light, but then without light, we were still able to trip the trap. I don't understand. Maybe Alfred would know. I mean, no. he's... We don't even know where Alfred is. Sylvan, right? He is. Um, yeah. I am at a loss. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's just go for now. Maybe we can figure this out and bring him back down here or, or figure out how to get him down here. I don't, I don't even know. Bracca, real quick, is just going to use a scroll of detect magic just in case he can see anything. Okay. So. so you walk to the edge of the room and use detect magic? Yeah. As you look across the room, you realize that all the stones give off some sort of faint glow. However, there is one that's brighter than the others in the fourth quadrant, but it's not one that you have marked. Okay. And that's all that's lit up in the room? Nothing mm-hmm. else? So, all the stones have a faint glow to them, but one is bright One in particular? Bright right blue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Then, as you look across, and you acknowledge that, you look into the second quadrant, and there's another stone that is a different color than all the rest. Okay. Would I know if it's tied to like a school of magic? No, <clears throat> this isn't necessarily a school of magic that it's it's tied to. It's just these are all magical stones. However, it does appear that two of them have some type of magic tied to it more than the others. Okay. That scroll lasts for ten minutes, right? Uh, I don't know how long detect magic. Does it detect magic ten minutes? Uh, magic concentration up to 10 minutes okay okay so one was lit up or like more brightly lit up and mm-hmm. then another one started to brightly light up yes what? one is like so all of them are lit up with a dim light yeah the one in the fourth quadrant that you're looking at is more of a bluish hue the one in the second quadrant is more of like an orange hue okay could I do some sort of check to get any sort of like any more knowledge out of it besides just like colors? Not really, because it's just that's the scroll that lit it up. Yeah. I mean, Brock will say that. Just say that this specific he'll mark it in his notebook too. Like just like mark the mark the other two. And just say, I mean, I don't know what it means, but. I guess we should just move on. Th- I mean, this one's blue. That one's red. Well, I mean, have you tried to step on one of those? Since I'll step on the blue one, I guess. So okay. Ass- ass- <clears throat> assuming that the orange one's tied to fire or something like that. You step on the blue one, mm-hmm. and you do hear the... 
but something's different with this one. When you step on it and you hear the click, you can also feel it's as if the ground is... It's not like an earthquake rumble, but you can feel some type of vibration from the ground. Like, is it just, like, vibrating all over? Or like, something's, like, coming up? It feels like it's coming from the direction of the actual open pit. Okay. But it's not... It's not a feeling you felt before. So you're pretty sure there's... It's not because there's a object flying up from beneath. Okay. But just something's, like, vibrating down there or whatever? You guys can all make a perception check. Okay. 17. 21 for Agard. 12. Okay. It sounds like when the door opened that brought you into this chamber. Oh. So something opened? So the, maybe the, perhaps the door. <laughs> Agard is going to... But it's at the bottom of the pit. Yeah, sure. You feel like it's coming from the direction of the pit. Okay. Okay, this is the disarming mechanism. To arm it, you had to step on the orange yeah. tile. This is the disarming tile. Okay. Hagar just jumps in the pit. <laughs> 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 he just goes swan diving. So, uh, Agar will look at Raka then, and thinking that, will say step on one of the tiles that are stones that trip the device in the first place. Right now? I mean, if you want me to right now, I will. Well, we don't have to. I just, if this is disarmed, then this they won't do anything. Correct? In theory. While this conversation is happening, Braca, you turn and look. That orangish hued stone is no longer there. It now blends in with the rest of the stones. Okay. And is the one I'm standing on still, like, blue? Or, like, brightly blue? It's not the same color as the rest around. Okay, so it's completely disarmed, then. There's no way to reactivate it. I mean, maybe a door opened up at the bottom or something. Because you said it sounded like the, like, grinding noise, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Could we attempt to drop something down? Oh, yeah. I'll, um, get a different stone Mm -hmm. and make light on it and drop it down. Okay. It's kind of weak. The stone falls for about anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds before you hear it hit and kind of make a dribbling noise. Hmm. Okay. So about half the time it took mm-hmm. from before. Probably which is probably like 500 feet. Probably about a third of it. Yeah, it's okay. it's roughly it sounds like it roughly hit between like 300 and 350 feet. Okay. So very big difference. Maybe yeah, maybe just something sealed it off. Yeah. But again, to what end? No. Unless there is a door beneath us. Agard, at this point, I will fly down into the pit to see if something has opened. Okay. And he changes to an owl and then descends. So in your owl form, you fly down. You move at what, like 60 feet, right? With I owl? can, but I think even... That's it, normal speed, though, right? That's not double speed with owl. Right, it's normal speed, mm-hmm. but I think... To, to really look, you know, I, he would be a little bit more cautious. You don't, you okay. don't have to move 60 right. feet, so he's going to be moving very carefully. Roll down. a... Well, your past perception's 18. Roll a d20. We'll say if it's under 10, you're moving a little too fast. 12. But 12? Okay. So you move at the speed you want to. Mm-hmm. Takes you about, I'd say, 15 to 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of flying in a circular pattern, going all the way around. Just looking, kind of gliding down. You reach what looks like a platform that has sealed Mm. where you guys were. Mm -hmm. And as you land and start to look around, you see an open doorway in front of you. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to end this week's episode, as Braca, Katie, and Agard have regrouped and discussed the strange chamber they discovered. This mysterious chamber stumped the party, and as a last-ditch effort, Braca cast Detect Magic from a scroll they received from the three wizards on the road. 
the trapped tiles lit up and the party was able to disarm the trap and heard rumblings beneath them. Agard has turned into an owl and flew down and discovered a platform with a door leading into darkness. Thank you friends and fellow adventurers for tuning in and following the party as they explore the homebrewed lands of Manassas. Everyone here at Cocked, a real play RPG podcast, is very appreciative of all the love and support we have received from all of our followers. If you haven't already, please check out the links in the episode description and follow the show and our cast on Instagram. Patreon subscribers, just a reminder, don't forget about the exclusive perks you receive, such as access to the soon-to-be-released prequel episodes, giving name suggestions for future NPCs, Discord chat access with the cast here, and the ability to suggest questions you'd like to hear the cast answer at the beginning of the episodes. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, check out the link to our Patreon in the episode description, along with the other links to the cast and the show's Instagram accounts. Tune in next week as we see what lies behind the door in the pit. Cool. Well, Man, did that take us a lot longer than it should have? Uh, no, because I was... What you guys thought yeah. had to do with the light, I was literally rolling random tiles okay. for that, it. That's what I thought that yeah. But it oh, went back God. to 4-1... I rolled that twice, and I was like, shit. And then you guys were like, oh, it has to do with the light. And I was like, fuck. And I had just thought, like, That's funny. a little bit ago, I was like, man, I haven't rolled a one, like, for the random. They're probably, I was like, well, that torch is out. Oh, shit. I was like, well, that's okay. They haven't clued in on it yet. And then about 30 seconds later, you're like, it's the torches. And I was like, fuck, this is the biggest red herring in the world, and I can't say anything. Let like, us on a shit. wild goose chase. We deserve a level up now. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, so here's the thing. How are we getting all three of us down uh, 350 feet? I can, I have a, I can, I can make a, I can make a potion. <laughs>